I remember uh, at age seven, uh, walking uh, along a balance beam uh, in my school hall, in my, uh, in, in my pants, in my vest, because that's what we did in those days. Uh, and I remember getting towards the end of this balance beam and slipping off and landing on my back in a heap on the floor. And then it, it started, or rather it seemed to stop. I couldn't breathe. I was trying, but nothing was happening. I looked up and around in panic to my classmates, to my teacher, to see if they'd noticed me. Luckily, she had, and she was walking over to me. By this point, I was panicking. I couldn't breathe. I was going to die. I was sure of it. She just came over with a bit of a wry smile on her face. I was thinking, what are you smiling at? Can't you see I'm about to die here? She came over. She propped me up. She told me to calm down, to breathe, and said, you're fine you're fine. You've just winded yourself. Maybe you've had a similar thing happen to you. Uh, Maybe you've been winded before. You've had the air taken out of you. It's not a nice feeling. And the first time it happens, you can kind of wonder what on earth is going on. And when you're winded, temporarily, what happens is your diaphragm stops contracting, stops tightening. And that means breathing feels impossible. But it's only when you get the wind knocked out of you that you suddenly become aware how important breathing is. Sounds obvious, but we don't think about it. It's so natural to us that we breathe. Without the ability to breathe, suddenly we recognize that things don't look quite so good. And quite frankly, fullness of life begins to stop. And eventually, if we don't start breathing again, then obviously we die altogether. We need to breathe to have life. It's fundamental to living. And this morning, as we think about prayer, I think the analogy of breathing, this idea of breathing, is helpful. We often speak of having a prayer life, both as individuals, but also as the church. We call it a prayer life because like breathing, prayer is what keeps our relationship with God alive. It's through prayer that we are filled with the life-giving breath of his spirit, just like breathing. Uh, verse is going to come up on the slide. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5 that we are to pray without ceasing. We're to pray all the time. We're to pray continually. The message says pray at all times. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean we walk around with our eyes closed and our hands together and our heads bowed the whole time? Well, of course, it doesn't mean that because apart from anything else, it would be quite dangerous. But just as breathing is essential to our physical lives, so prayer is essential to our spiritual lives. A life without prayer looks really different to a life with prayer. A life without prayer looks really different to a life with prayer. How many breaths do you think we take each day? Any ideas? Five? Ten million? How many breaths each day? Six thousand? Million. Apparently, each day we take about 26,000 breaths. Any ideas how much air we take into our lungs each day? So, without 26,000, how many liters of air do you think we take into our lungs each day? 26,500. 20, yeah, 26 liters. 150 liters. Any advance on that? We take 14,000 liters of air into our lungs each day. And scientists say that if you're breathing properly the way you're designed to breathe, then your body should be able to get 90% of its energy from our breathing. But scientists also say because we're so busy, because we're always so distracted or we're always rushing around onto the next thing, that actually, rather than 90% of our lung capacity, we only use about 10 to 20% of our. 
We could be breathing far more deeply, far more effectively. And so I wonder, it got me wondering to what our prayer lives are like. Might it be that if our prayer lives grew deeper, if we intentionally slowed down and focused a little bit more on prayer and through prayer time with God, that our lives would be even fuller. Maybe our prayer life looks like that, which is great. But if we used more of the capacity that we have, maybe our prayer lives might look a little bit bigger still. Or maybe if we kept on discovering what our prayer lives could look like, that actually we might expand even more than that. You get the idea. Might it be that if our prayer lives grew deeper, we'd experience and be filled more with the presence of God? That not only would we be filled this much, but we might even be filled this much. Just imagine what might be possible. Just imagine what impact that might have on the lives of others around us. If people see that much of God on me as I walk around, it, people might notice it a little bit, a little balloon attached to me. If I'm walking around with this, people will definitely notice. If I'm walking around with this, then people will definitely sit up and take more notice. It's harder to ignore the fuller we are. And you know, I don't know if ever you've been on an aeroplane, but at the, on an aeroplane, when you're about to fly, uh, they come and do the safety briefing, and they tell you about putting oxygen masks on in case of an accident uh, so that you're able to breathe. And I remember the first time I went on a plane, it struck me as slightly weird that they make a real point of saying, make sure you put your own oxygen mask on first before you help others. In other words, you need to be able to breathe properly and deeply and well if you're then going to help others. And it's the same with our mission out there. There's a world that desperately needs to know God, that needs to know the breath of God filling them. And we can go out and we can do all kinds of activities and we can tell people about Jesus. We can invite them to the Alpha Away Day like we had yesterday. We can do Stay Toasty. We can do all kinds of amazing stuff. But the truth is, if we've not got oxygen on ourselves, if we're not being fooled with the presence of God ourselves, then actually uh, we're not doing the best kind of that we can do. It's not going to have the biggest impact it can because we're not going to have that impact and effect on people. And that filling, that breath of God comes only through time in prayer. We can't go out and change the world and do the things God calls us to if we're not first full of the breath of the Spirit. Spurgeon, uh, Charles Spurgeon, a famous preacher, he called the church prayer meeting when the church came together. He called it the powerhouse of the church. And he said, if the engine room is out of action, then the whole factory will grind to a halt. Church, the truth is, if we're not, as a church, making prayer and corporate prayer together a priority, then the whole factory, the whole engine, is going to come to a halt. You know, the church prayer meeting isn't an added option, an added extra for those who are super spiritual. It's fundamentally the key part of what we do and who we are as a church. The disciples, as they spent time with Jesus every day, going where he went, seeing what he did, listening to what he said, they only ever asked Jesus to teach them one thing. Imagine all the things they saw Jesus do and say, but there's only one thing out of all that that they ever asked Jesus to teach them. Having seen Jesus in action, the one thing that they saw Jesus do, that they desperately wanted to learn. The one reality that they saw in Jesus' life that they desperately wanted to have for themselves was the closeness to God, of being filled with the Spirit of God. And so they said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And so Jesus teaches them to pray. He teaches them in what we now know as the Lord's Prayer. 
He gives them a pattern of how to pray. And that prayer, there's like things in it that we exhale, things we breathe out. Lord, forgive us our sins. But there's also things that we breathe in. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, give us today our daily bread. And the Lord's Prayer is a great way of just taking each phrase and then thinking about what it might mean for your life and praying that through each day. But the real punchline comes a few verses later in verse 13, which is going to come up on the slide. Jesus says, How much more will your Father in heaven give Give, he didn't say that. Uh, he was speaking in Aramaic. Uh, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Jesus is saying, you want to learn to pray? Well, here, here's a way that you can pray. Here's some words that you can say to help you structure your prayers. This is how you can pray. But if you want to learn to pray, you need to ask for more of the breath of God. You need to ask for more of the Holy Spirit to fill you. Because the Holy Spirit will teach you to pray. Often we just say, uh, teach us to pray, and we look at the Lord's Prayer. But it goes on to this rest of this verse. Ask the Spirit to come and fill you, and he will teach you what to pray. And so, like we have every week, we've just got a slide coming up that maybe just gives you a few ways that you can begin to put this into practice. I know some weeks people have just taken a little screenshot of it. They've found that helpful, so do feel free to get your phones out and do that. But depending kind of whether you're new to faith or have no faith, whether you're kind of, you know, doing a right in your faith or whether you're kind of really mature and along in your faith, here's just some ideas of things that you might do to go kind of from that to maybe this, to be more full of his spirit. We'd love everyone, the whole church, as we go through the rest of Lent into, into Easter and Pentecost, maybe set your alarms for midday every day. And when it goes off, we're all going to pray the Lord's Prayer together, wherever we are. It's a way we can collectively pray. We've got Kingdom Come coming up on Monday, Thursday. We're going to be upstairs all being well, because the first thing we want to do up there is pray. And so we'd love you to join us on Monday, Thursday as we think about all Jesus did, but as we pray together, as we ask God's Spirit to come and fill us for the next chapter. And you know that as we pray, we can be filled with the Spirit. But when we come together and pray, when you add your prayers to my prayers, when we all come together, when we all discover what it is to live a life, I don't know who I'm crushing there. (laughs) When we all come together and ask God for more and more, this is limitless, this could be even bigger, but can you see what a difference and impact of that in our lives and our community would have (laughs) as opposed to just a few of those? Can you get a picture of the difference it will make if we can understand, if we can grow more in our life together, in prayer together. Asking God to come and fill us. Asking God to teach us. Thank you, Anthony. Could you get rid of that, mate? (laughs) Asking God to fill us with his spirit and teach us to pray. So we're going to stand together and we're going to ask the spirit to do that just now, to come And teach us to pray.